As the holidays approach, we all may be considering that perfect gift for our loved ones, or even for ourselves. However, we at Brief Brain Facts are thinking all about what gifts actually represent, and how gift giving may be represented in the brain. So to help bring in the holidays, our big gift to you and to ourselves is to discuss the brain and prosocial behavior of giving. Giving gifts is a widespread custom, seen throughout many different societies in many places around the world. The practice may be viewed as a transfer of resources from the giver to the receiver, but many gifts aren't essential resources like food, water, or money. According to researchers, the most useful gifted resource is money, but money is often viewed as an inconsiderate gift. This enforces the idea that gifts are not always practical. Instead, they often hold sentimental or emotional value, a symbolic gesture. Thus, beyond being viewed as a means to transfer resources, gift giving is a social custom designed to enhance cooperative behavior. Gift exchange designed to create cooperation and bonds among groups and individuals is an aspect of reciprocal altruism. Altruism is the process by which one considers the interest of another without an ulterior motive. As you may have guessed, altruistic behaviors differ from behavior behaviors geared towards Ken, where helping may be explained based on familial relation. Instead, gift exchange in terms of altruism can be explained as a custom built to create cooperation among friendship circles and others, outside of supporting cooperative behaviors among family members. And speaking of gift giving, an issue that arises in understanding altruism in relation to gift giving are the kinds of relationships shared between gift giver and recipient, in addition to their motivations. In fact, researchers note that not only are happier people more likely to give to others, but also that giving to others may result in increased happiness. This may promote the idea that true altruism does not exist, as personal gain from giving is a well-documented phenomenon, whether the gain is emotional or tangible. A personal gain that's been discovered are the physical health benefits of giving. For instance, participants giving tangible forms of assistance, such as being emotionally available for a grieving friend, were 50% less likely to die prematurely compared to non-giving participants. This finding remained after controlling for various factors such as health status, alcohol consumption, and exercise. Thus, social bonds, regardless of genetic relational proximity, evolved to promote pro-social behaviors, such as giving, as giving may have both individual and group benefits. Altruistic behaviors impact how humans interact with one another and appears to affect mental and physical health. Gifting and other helping behaviors are observed early in a child's development, appearing during a time that empathy and the ability to understand the perspective of others begin to emerge. The ability to understand the position of others is a cognitive process known as theory of mind. As such, researchers propose that altruism may share similar brain regions involved in empathy, agency detection, and theory of mind. As an example, neuroimaging studies have shown a relationship between an area of the brain associated with agency detection, the posterior superior temporal cortex, with self-reported altruistic behaviors. When given the opportunity to choose between a selfish or an altruistic act, more gray matter volume within the temporoparietal junction, the TPJ, predicted those who decided to act altruistically as opposed to selfishly. The TPJ has been associated with the ability to understand others' perspectives. As such, altruism measured as general helpful behavior appears to engage areas of the brain related to the ability to understand agency and perspectives of others. However, these findings do not entirely explain the specific act of exchanging gifts or resources. Let's make a distinction between altruism and reciprocal altruism, or reciprocity. And this distinction may be dependent upon understood relationships and motivating behaviors of the gift exchangers. According to economic researchers, 60% of a giver's motivation to give is based on altruism, while 42% of a receiver's motivation to receive may be attributed to altruism during reciprocal exchanges. This may highlight a distinct process or underlying motivation that can be attributed to altruism and reciprocity during gift exchanges. A functional magnetic resonance imaging study associated giving financial support to charities and experiencing reward. Specifically, activation of the ventral striatum, a part of the brain's reward system, was seen when participants made gift donations. In this study, Participants give with no expectation of reciprocity from the receiver. These findings may show specific brain mechanisms underlying altruistic gifting. The giving behavior may be reinforced via activation of the brain's reward system, thereby continuing to promote prosocial behavior in the absence of tit-for-tat reciprocity at the neuronal level. In a study examining reciprocity specifically, when gifts were exchanged between participants and a partner with a trustworthy reputation, as in participants trusted their partners to eventually reciprocate, both the orbitofrontal cortex and the ventral striatum, 
both areas of the brain corresponding with reward were activated. Other researchers discovered a brain response associated with aversion during a reciprocal task and where trust was broken between the giver and the receiver. In particular, the insula activated when reciprocity rules were broken, diminishing trust between givers and receivers. Essentially, when the expectation for cooperative behavior is broken, no feelings of reward take place. Also, when interacting with someone who has broken reciprocity rules, areas of the brain related to aversion appear to become active. These results may indicate important protective mechanisms in place designed to identify a cheater and assure that one has an aversive response towards them to prevent further interactions. A cheater being someone unwilling to engage in pro-social behavior while willing to violate social rules that promote pro-social behaviors. Unfortunately, societies may be vulnerable to people taking advantage of the kindness and generosity of others. In economic game theory, these people are known as parasites. Building customs in which gift giving is an expectation will force likely parasites to participate in gift exchange customs. Else further encounters may leave an identified parasite gift list, while also identifying the parasite as a social cheater, who received resources yet was unwilling to sacrifice resources of their own. Gift giving as a widespread phenomenon appears to be built into our brains in order to promote pro-social behaviors, such as cooperation. Intention of the giver appeared to be a main factor in identifying what kind of gifting relationship, either an altruistic or reciprocal relationship, is established between the giver and the recipient. Regarding reciprocity, gift giving is a prosocial behavior that produces future prosocial behaviors and forces likely cheaters to participate in prosocial activities. When this expectation is violated, brain mechanisms may help identify cheaters and signal the need to distance the self from the cheater. Both altruistic gifting and reciprocal gifting involve the reward center of the brain, potentially designed to make the giver feel rewarded for their prosocial behaviors. Engagement of these brain areas may also lead to further gifting behaviors. So do you believe that true altruism exists? Comment below. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and take a look at our Patreon page for updates and perks for our members. As always, thank you for watching.